Hi, howdy, hello everybody, it's me Waddles and welcome back to the mo- <laughs> Excuse me, it's me Waddles and Bonesa. It's me Waddles and Bonesa. Poor Bonesa, I always forget about you. I hope you're doing well everybody. Welcome to the most portal episode of all time. In this episode, we're going to talk all about the fastest way to travel inside of Minecraft, set up some portals, the link some portals, and then after that, get to sign building and talk about one of the most beautiful build hacks I've ever found too. Huh. We got a lot to do. So lads, sit back, laddies, relax, and everybody else, just enjoy the ride. It's time for a flashback throwback. It was but just mere moments ago that I kicked off the episode inside of the Cherry Cove. However, in between episodes, I was not inside of the Cherry Cove. I was specifically right there, or maybe it was right there, or possibly it could have been right there, but I, yeah, either way, it doesn't really matter. It's all within a couple hundred blocks of itself. You see, I knew exactly what I wanted to build inside of this episode. And to build inside of this episode? Oh man, if I show you where we went, you would have said like, Oh, Waddles, that's a nostalgic throwback, perfectly timed for the beginning of fall. Oh, sheesh, Matt, I didn't know you were chill like that. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm always chill like that. You see, for today's episode, I knew that I wanted to talk all about nether portals. And the easiest way to talk about nether portals, probably, is to talk about them. The second easiest thing that I should do while talking about nether portals is probably show them off. I don't know, I'm not a professional or anything, but it seems like it might be a smart idea. Inside of our lovely little world here, we are no strangers to nether portals. Definitely not at all. In fact, the opposite. But we are absolutely strangers to the fastest way to travel inside of Minecraft. If you're ever trying to go somewhere inside of Minecraft and you want to, like, go somewhere fast, it's all nether portals. And that right there will get us to the why of today's episode. So, I can't lie. At the beginning of fall and everything, it gets me feeling a little bit nostalgic. When I feel a little bit nostalgic, I think about the past. That's kind of just how things go. When I think about the past... Oh, don't make me think about the past. That old base. I mean, look, we always had to leave that base. We never could have stayed, but... Oh, oh man, it hurts me. I miss it. I, I just made it beautiful and abandoned it flat out. Oh. And so that's where the nether portal comes in. If you have two spots, point A and point B, we'll call them inside of your world, and you want to go really quickly in between A and B, well, get an elytra, my friend. It's just way better. But alternatively, let's say you have point A and point B, and you were just really relatively near point A, but completely forgot to get a single piece of flint and steel. Wouldn't be me, no. This is not from reality. You completely forgot to get a single piece of flint and steel, so you're left scrounging, scrounging, scavenging, will you whatever, for looking for a single piece of flint and steel the good old-fashioned way. Like a, like a broke, broke man, which is completely fine, to be clear. I, this here, look, maybe I forgot flint and steel, maybe I didn't. Doesn't matter, it's right here. Bones, oh my boy, my non-judgmental boy, you will be so proud of this flint and steel sourced directly from the new base entirely. Yes, this is our flint and steel. Stare at it with your dreamy, blank eyes that look like a, an empty void of nothingness. Oh gosh, I, I hope you're okay. Inside of Minecraft, a faster way to travel is the elytra. But maybe the fastest way to travel of all time is with a sweet, sweet thing called the nether portal. If we light this nether portal right here, being the second portal of the world, if you're unfamiliar, you may think we will be sent over the swordle. However, no, that's not how it works. Instead, how it works is I'll be sent into an evil, hostile, hateful land, the Crimson Forest. And now, lads, boys, it's a race against the clock. The music begins. We need to tear it down and tear it up, boys. I said it, and I'll say it again. I'm hearing them already, and you know what I'm realizing? I'm realizing it's insanely awkward, but those gold boots, it would look really good on me. Because I don't have any gold. <sighs> don't forget the gold. Nether portal linking. Step one, make the second nether portal of your world. Step two, move into the nether and actually move that portal. Tear it down immediately. Big time, I'm actually so excited I can finally start to talk about this stuff because this is one of my favorite nether things. But inside of the nether, a very, very dangerous hostile space, there's a lot of bad mobs. Traveling around the nether, like between portal to portal, because of all of the bad things that like to live all over the place, it could be a little bit dangerous. While that is, it could be dangerous, unless you use the nether's generation to your advantage, then it might not be bad. All over the nether, a little bit more specifically, all over the nether's y-axis, we've got a little bit of consistency when it comes to generation. Near the bottom, you're gonna find lava, ocean, and land. That's where you will find ancient debris. In the middle, you'll find all of the biomes and openness. It's cool to explore, but very dangerous. Moving higher up, typically you'll find like anywhere from five all the way up to like 30 blocks. And those blocks are solid blocks. 
Check this out. Here we go. We go from the lower part of the nether into the nether rack ceiling. And I can almost guarantee for sure that this is going to be solid all the way up to about Y120. Right now, we sit at whew, 97. We're pretty close. In the nether, the vibe is a little bit different. Eventually, aha, yes. As soon as we start to reach about Y120 something, we're going to start seeing bedrock. Slowly but surely, that bedrock will gradient in. It'll kind of like fade in and eventually be a flat ceiling. The other part of the nether's generation is the nether ceiling. On Minecraft Java, of course, you can get on top of it. It's great for farms, but we'll talk about that later. For now, what we're going to do is move into the nether, break the portal immediately, and they get really high. Like we're talking 117. This isn't an approximate science, though. If you get anywhere like above 110, you should be good for my favorite portal hack of all time. Move up high in the nether, clear out a little bit of space, and then find your obsidian. When you make a new portal inside of the nether, you're going to get the full portal, including the corners. And now look, you know me. I would never skip the corners on a portal. Your eyes are just being a little bit deceptive. You see, from certain angles, it may almost appear that I use cherry logs in the portal, but no, 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 it's not even a hot bar, it's all obsidian. And sure, it's a little bit of a messy room, not much of a definition when it comes to shape to it, but all that matters here is we took the nether portal, kept it on about the same X and Z coordinates, just bumped it up on the Y. We bump it all the way up to 117 in the Y, light it, and I can almost guarantee for certain, because I have no other portals nearby, if I move back into this thing, in the old world, even though it's technically at different spots than it originally was, we link up pretty much perfectly. So today's episode, Nether Portal Linking, believe it or not, is actually not really an exact science. Or at least it doesn't need to be. As long as you're not working on, say, your local SMP, Hermitcraft, or something like that, and you have like a bunch of portals nearby that need to be specifically linked, as long as you approximate your coordinates and get them like relatively close to what they have to be, overworld nether-wise, we'll talk about it in a minute, the portals will link, and you'll be fine. Now, the nether is much quicker than the overworld, and more specifically, eight times quicker. Check this out. Inside of this random world right here, my coordinates, 139, 82. If I go ahead and jump into the portal, show the coordinates, all of a sudden, I'm at 19, 9. With a little bit of quick science, number crunching, swimming, everything like that, we will pretty quickly find out that all that happened is we basically divided those coordinates by about eight. Back inside of the guide world, glancing over briefly at my Minecraft guide journal that is definitely not a diary. In fact, I have no clue why you guys keep calling it a diary. It's a journal. Inside of that journal, I have some coordinates. With the context that we've done pretty much nothing inside of the nether other than build a portal, I bet you can't guess what it is. The coordinates that I'm searching for right now, negative 11, zero. That's going to be the Z and the X coordinate. For nether portal linking, basically today, ignore the Y coordinate. It's not really important. Anyways, negative 11, zero. Right now, what I have to do is carefully, in the top of the nether, very carefully, we watch out for things like lava. Very, very cautiously and carefully, what I need to do is build a small hallway that reaches all the way to those coordinates. And while I do that, it's time for a game. A little riddle. Down below the video, kind of relatively near the like button that you probably already tapped, is the comment section. Down in the comment section, you put the answer to the riddle. Today's riddle, I fly high in the nether, and the ender dragon is my mortal enemy. Who in the world am I? So good luck with that riddle. I hope it goes well. So anyways, just a little bit of time later and I'm doing so well. I seem to have hit a small cave, uh, maybe a high ravine inside of the nether, but it's been so easy so far. And that's because I'm doing everything up high. You see, knowing a little bit about nether generation and how it goes, typically at the top of the nether, we have basically solid blocks everywhere. There's not going to be very many openings. Not very many openings means not very many mobs up here. And I mean, not very many mobs up here, including specifically no gas, no hogland, nothing like that. Well, I mean, it's all linked together. Traveling around inside of the nether, you want to do it the easy way, link portals, stuff like that. Do it at the top of the nether. There's no mobs. When portal linking, traveling, stuff like that in the nether, there are multiple ways to do things. The first way we're doing things today is when we have an existing portal. We know where it is. If that's the case, all you really need to do is make a hallway over to the new portal and link them up. If you're at the top of the nether, to move down safely, what I like to do is dig a couple blocks out, place ladders, crouch on the ladders, and repeat until eventually I hit that brand new old portal. Look, you listen here, I'm gonna do it. I have Feather Falling 4 on the boots. It should be fine, theoretically. But if anything bad happens to me from falling from this high, high height, if anything bad happens, it's completely and totally your fault. Oh, come on, of course, easy. Haha, <laughs> it's so easy. 
And so here we are, just like that, negative 11, approximately zero. Sliding through this portal, we will find out that this goes over to the famous Zordal. The amazing spawn base, just like that, it's just about linked up. Now, anytime I need to go from the other base, Cherry Cove, way off over there, to this one. Instead of traveling like 2,000 blocks in the overworld, 3,000, all I need to do is travel like, hey, travel like a couple of hundred blocks inside of the nether. That's much, much better. Once you inevitably, easily make it to your target destination, pull the original portal down and move it up to the top of the nether. Checked up. Now, just like how we did it before, because our nether portal is still on approximately the same X and Z coordinate, even though I moved it way higher up in the Y axis, when I light this portal and go through, because there are no other portals nearby, 100% of the time, it's gonna link right back up to nether swarm. And that's how you link a nether portal. But to be honest, that is the easy way of linking a portal. That's when you like, already know exactly what portal coordinates you need to move over to. What if you didn't know? Like, let's say maybe, what if you were, say, exploring the old world episodes and episodes ago, months ago at this point, and you found a desert. And inside of that desert, there's a whole lot of sand, very useful resource. When you found that desert, let's say you wrote the desert coordinates down inside of your diary. You have the exact overworld coordinates that you need to get to. You want to have a portal at it, but you don't have any coordinates inside of the nether. How in the world would you pull that one off then? Like, let's say, theoretically, we had the overworld coordinates of 4,250. And then knowing that the nether is eight times faster than the overworld, we divided 4,250 by eight. And we came up with the answer of 531. Then we would write that down. But 4,250, well, that was only the X coordinate. We also had the Z coordinate here. Let's say our Z coordinate was theoretically something like 370. If we go ahead and do the same thing, divide that number by eight, then we come out with 46.25. Write that down. So right now we've got 531, ignore the Y coordinate, 46. 531, 46. If you're trying to do a little bit of portal linking and you know the overworld coordinates, to get the nether coordinates, all you need to do is divide them by eight and then move over to those coordinates. So move over to those coordinates. That goes all the way back over to spawn. From this spot right here, I think what I could do is dig a long, long hallway going all the way out to 531 or whatever, then turn over just a little bit like this or something, and boom, I'll be at 46 in no time. But sadly, yeah, tragically, the only thing that's making me a little bit nervous about this whole op here is gonna be this sweet diamond pickaxe. I don't want to ruin it. I don't really want to trash it. So I, in a move that I am not definitely exactly entirely proud of, it's stone pickaxe for me. And it's time to dig. Ha ha! The Basalt Deltas biome. So for the longest time, I was going through what was the biggest Crimson Forest biome. I hit a small nether waste biome, and now we hit the Basalt biome. Ooh, very, very interesting. And actually, for today's bonus build, Blackstone, that's gonna be perfectly useful. That's the first Blackstone of the world. This stuff is great for building. And so finally, a whole bunch of digging later, and lads, we've done it. If you've got the coordinates of something in the overworld, divide those numbers by eight, go to that spot inside of the nether, and make a portal. And theoretically, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm not terribly embarrassed. We walk in, give it a minute, and ha-ha! Just like that, here we are. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. This spot is going to be so nice for so many things. If you remember when we were over here, hmm, very interesting. Oh, but no, 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 it gets better. Mm-hmm, very, very interesting. And finally, mm-hmm, 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 super interesting. There are so many great things over here inside of the, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of really, really good things over here inside of this spot in the desert, including sand, sweet, sweet, beautiful sand. For today's bonus build, we're gonna do something a little bit more big and grand than we've done in the past couple episodes. Today's bonus build is going to involve a beautiful nether portal. You see, my friends, inside of this world, we've already got the beautiful Sordal. My goal is to hopefully top that nether portal over at the new base. To top that nether portal over at the new base is pretty straightforward. I need to build something nothing short of perfection and beauty. 
And to build something nothing less than perfection, I've done a little bit of thinking and a tiny bit of looking back, but with a modern twist. Because of the raw material that is in beautiful abundance over at the desert, sand, and how useful it is in builds, in my opinion, one of the best spots you could link a nether portal up to inside of your world is the nearest desert, which is hopefully this one, because that was a lot of digging in the nether. A little bit of time later, back over at home sweet home with more sand than I could have ever dreamed of, it's time for a small furnace setup. Oh man, guys, I really, really, absolutely soon, I promise I'll do it. Soon, I promise, I guarantee it, we'll get around to a, like a super auto smelter setup, or at least like a beginner one, but for now, that'll work. Now, over here at the portal, I have the exact perfect vision as to what I want to build for this nether portal over at our base. You see, we got a little bit of a grand, large portal. I was thinking step number one, kind of like we did for the nether sword back over at the other base, we make a small island that this thing could be sitting on. I think my positioning initially was like pretty much perfect. If I clear out some of these cherry trees, I should have just enough room to fit in what I want to fit in next to this build without ruining any of the other builds we built. And hey, by the way, other builds that we built, speaking of those things, I found a small problem with the bee thing. So our bees, they kind of like went haywire. They went MIA completely. And it's because I had staircases on top of this thing. I don't exactly know why it would be because the bees are meant to enter from the front. But if you build a contraption like this, I guess no solid blocks on top. Anyways, nether portal. I decided to move it over a couple blocks. I left my flint and seal inside of the nether, so I get it later. Anyways, one adjusted nether portal later in a small island. Let's head back over to the other base and do a little bit of enchanting. You see the current diamond pick? It's not doing too hot. I'm hoping real quick here. We can throw that in, throw that in, and silk touch efficiency. I need silk touch on a diamond pickaxe that is very good. Because there aren't too many enchantments here, I don't feel too, oh, that's good, that's really good. We combine that with something and get something even more beautiful. I'll keep it. Of course, I haven't forgotten, I do have that wonderful Silk Touch book, but Silk Touch is also not too hard to find. Not too bad. I think I could actually do a little bit better though, so let's go ahead and try again. Aha, that's a little bit better. Oh, and shoot, no way. While we're here, I mean, hey, we might as well. Your respiration three. That'll be great for a helmet. A much better one later. You know what, doubly while I'm here, I guess I'm addicted. Sharpness four, yeah, why not? And let's double check even more. Riptide, hmm, eh, ah, it's okay. That's where I stop. All right, so back over here at home sweet home with a couple new pickaxes, I'd like to show you an amazing build trick. But to show you this build trick, first we need to collect a couple supplies. We're gonna need a little bit of dye. I'm thinking pink as dye color number one. For dye number two, in between episodes, at a nearby forest, I went out and sourced a little bit of lilac. If I go ahead and bone meal the two tall lilac, throw the lilac inside of the crafting grid just like that, and then craft it, I get magenta dye. So those will be the two dye colors I used today. No matter what, you need to use at least two dye colors, but you could totally use more. After that, we need glass, and that's why I went over to the desert. After all of that, I'm gonna realize that I forgot to craft an enchanted diamond shovel, so I'll make a stone one. It's fine, I feel fine about that, yeah. Now inside of the crafting table, first things first, we're gonna make a little bit of tinted glass, small handful, something like that. After that, we'll need a little bit of pink stained glass and to top everything off, some magenta glass too. And over here, check it. I got another portal sitting on an island, except small problem, the island is not an island. To make this island, make sure it like makes sense and looks beautiful later on, I'll take the netherrack from the island and continue it down a little bit. I don't have to go too far. Next up, prepare to be amazed. So I only dug three blocks down. All over the floor down here, I'm gonna place tinted glass. Because tinted glass doesn't let any light through at all, it gets really dark under there. That's pretty cool. Next up, I'm gonna pick my secondary color, the color that I want to blend into the effect that I'm creating here. So for me today, pink. We'll place pink all over like that. And finally, to finish it all off today, we'll take a different stained glass color and cover the entire top. And voila, just like that. It's small right now, but we get this cool, the hazy effect. We get this cool, hazy effect with literally half of the glass that you would have ever used before. It's low-key, high-key kind of genius, and look, I don't want to float myself up too much, but I was pretty excited when I realized that in between episodes. Oh, it's beautiful. But look, uh, let's be honest, right now, on a small scale, it's not that cool looking. If I went ahead and, say, expanded it a little bit, halfway around this island a little bit, with just a little bit of build expertise and beautification, we can expand it and make it look even better. 
And so check this out. Instead of just that small little moat, what if I went ahead and widened it a little bit, wrapped it around the island? I'm thinking over there, I'll have it go into a cave or something. And then over here, I'm not too sure quite yet. Either I continue wrapping, or I maybe come back in after I build a lava farm soon and put a bunch of lava in there. That could be cool. But anyways, let's say I went ahead and expanded it. And for consistency's sake, because it's not too deep, we'll make the bottom block the same all over this thing. Just like before, except now on a bigger scale, we start with tinted glass all over the place. Then we pick our second color. We put that all over. Then after we finish off that second color, last but not least, we come in with a different third color. Well, coming in with that third color, I hit a small problem, and that's gonna be the land. But no big deal. All I need to do is raise the land up on the outside a little bit. To blend her in a little bit more, make it look even more seamless, no big deal. How about some piled rocks all around the side? Yeah, you know what? For 100% certain, back behind this thing, how about we have a big pit of lava? That could look really cool and look even more nethery. Then I'll have the lava, like, go into a waterfall or something and drop down there. That'll blend with the fog pretty cool. I hope. Except small problem, large body of lava sitting right back there. Of course, it could go source it from the wild, the nether or something, but... Imagine if I just had a farm over here for that. Hmm, that's not a hint. Anyways, over here on the other side, with the help of a little bit of dark, dark stone, clearly, as you can see, we have a large, deep cave. Ooh, that's good. And of course, of course, flowing into this large, deep cave with a stony surround all over the place. It's that weird fog. What is that? Is that like the nether portal or something? Oh, that's crazy. After that, I think it's time for a small nether bridge with maybe this really evil-looking block. That's sweet. What if, say, we had a small nether bridge sitting right here, maybe a little bit off-center with a portal? That could look cool. And of course, it bridges right over and kind of right through the fog. I mean, after all, what in the world is that stuff? Nobody would want to ever step in that, right? Anyways, couple handy little hacks later, and we have an area that is not looking too terrible. I mean, it definitely needs a little bit more spicing. I'm thinking maybe, like, some more nether plants in there or something. Maybe even some fire sitting in here. We might be, like, we might be far enough away to be able to put flames here, but... I don't want to find out today. And then, of course, behind the portal, 100% going to need lava in here. Once I spice this up with some lava, I really think this whole zone will come alive. Maybe even, like, pull out some of the nether stuff a little farther out. Build some nether farms around it. That could be pretty cool. The big thing that I was just so excited about here today is the fog. The fog with just three layers of glass with the bottom layer as tinted glass. I mean, like, you can create such a cool-looking hazy fog effect with way less glass than you would have ever needed before. If you add even more layers of glass, then the color will get even more dense and cool looking. But we'll save that big scale for a different build later on. And so now it's time. <laughs> Today's comment of the day. So insanely embarrassing, guys. How could you do this? It was just a couple episodes ago when we were building this beautiful, efficient farm over here with bees and everything that I challenged you to a challenge. I said name a crop farming hack that I missed and... <sighs> Come on, I didn't actually mean it. There were, there were, there happened to be actually so many different crop farming tips. I'm gonna put four into the world. Alexandra Monet, 9386, loaded in. Of course, obviously, if you want your crop farm to run, you need to have the thing loaded in. I can't believe I didn't say that. That's like the most basic thing. Don't build your crop farm at the edge of your base. Duh. Aubrey Nicole's 5093 and a couple other people pointed out that beetroot is actually, it has a big point. Beetroot grows a whole lot faster than both potatoes and carrots. It has less stages, which means, I guess if you want the most efficient farm, you need to grow beet. Steam soldier, leaves, oh my gosh, leaves. Leaves nowadays, they're kind of beautiful. If you didn't know, you could actually waterlog leaves, which makes for a nice two-in-one, depending on the leaf that you use. If you use a leaf that bees can pollinate on, so like cherry leaves, you could waterlog this, have that be your water source for the whole farm, and also have it be the pollinating thing at the same time. A beautiful two-in-one. A beautiful two-in-one. Hey, bee number one. Hey, bee number two. Would you like to make the baby for me? Please do that. And finally, I wanted to point out a really, really cool one from Lewis Redmond to 9678. It's about light harvesting. So light harvesting isn't something that's really going to work for this farm right here because we built it out in the open. However, if I were to have built this in a cave or something and I had redstone lamps, I could turn off all of the redstone lamps, break one crop after they fully grow, and then all of the rest will automatically break. You see, when we were building this, and one tip that I definitely did remember to talk about, you need light for crops to grow. If I took the light away, all of these crops would harvest super quick. Not a little bit embarrassing, very impressively, there were so many amazing tips down in the comments of the bee farming episode, so I guess for even more crop farming life hacks, a lot that I didn't even ever know about, 
Some that I completely some that I completely forgot about. Some other really cool ones that don't necessarily apply, but I never knew about. You gotta check the comments. Thank you, everybody. That was genuinely like so fun. In the future, when we do other things, 100% that game's coming back. That was awesome. Anyways, nether portal, nether travel, portal linking. That's just about it for today. The bonus build, or at least a start to it, the portal zone over there. With a handy, beautiful little build hack. Yeah, we'll definitely be coming back to this thing and expanding and improving it very, very soon. Thank you all for watching, everybody. It's been me, Waddle. Smash like, subscribe. Patrons get early access to the episodes. The patron gang, Tanner B, Austin V, Andrew H, Gabriel Y, Fire Dragon 19, Empress MC, and the Great Vegeta. You're all amazing. The best. Thank you. It's episode number 28. Members are getting a world download super, super soon. Keep your eyes out for that, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.